been so much talk about Joker 2 being a weird musical, but honestly, I actually really enjoyed it. And the reason why I enjoyed it is probably because the cinematography was incredible. I'm personally a huge fan of Lawrence Cher and Todd Phillips when they work together. The cinematography just looks incredible. So I decided to make this video to just make a bit of a Halloween Joker inspired video. So what I did, I went out with my friend Fede and we got a bunch of shots of him wearing a Joker mask and like a bloody shirt. And the whole idea behind the video was to recreate a color grade very similar to the Joker. Obviously we didn't recreate any sets. I just wanted to shoot something cool and Joker looking and then try and recreate the colors in post-production. So I had a few scenes in mind, this one specific with Joker in the car and this other one with him leaning down smoking a cigarette in a very blue light. So we're jumping right into Da Vinci Resolve and what I do, as always, I create a bunch of nodes to start my node tree. So the first step is creating color space transform. Now, usually I would create color space transform into from Sony S-Log to DaVinci White Gamut and Intermediate. But for this specific video, because I want to use DaVinci's integrated LUTs, we're gonna create a color space transform from S-Log 3 to Cineon film log. And the reason is because the LUTs in the Vinci Resolve are made for Cineon log mostly. So we got Rec 709, Cineon log, and then we export from Rec 709, Cineon log to Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. So we got the first CSD and the last CSD. Then we had a bunch of nodes. In between, we got primaries, colors, we got LUTs, we got film and halation. And we go through all of this slowly together. The first thing I do, I add my LUT. So we go up here into the LUTs, film looks, and you have all of the Rec. 709 film looks integrated with DaVinci Resolve. My favorite that I like to use and the one that I'm gonna to use to recreate this Joker one is the Kodak 2383 D60. The D55 and the D65 are a bit too off in my opinion. I really like the D60, but feel free to use anything you like. Also, when I use these LUTs, I always bring the opacity down to about 50% just so the LUTs doesn't just ruin the footage. So once we're done with this, we're gonna hop into primaries and we're gonna adjust a few things here. First thing first, we are gonna compare the images that we have. So I have this one perfect shot that we're editing right now, but I want to compare it to Joker in the car. So we're gonna go up here. We wanna make sure that we have the compare still grades. This way, you're able to see both images next to each other and you can compare if you're doing the right job or not. So once we got this all set up and ready to go in primaries, we're gonna play around with the color wheels until we reach a look that it looks kind of similar to the older still frame. And in this case, I'm just chasing this very green turquoise kind of teal look. I'm not really caring about Joker itself because I will edit that later. And once we're happy with everything we reached, I think this is kind of similar. We're gonna move on to Joker. And to do this, we're gonna create a mask. So the first thing we're gonna do is try and match the white balance of Joker's face and also the skin tones that we can see on his neck. Now, it is a bit more on the greenish, so we're gonna play around again with the color wheels. You can do this in many other ways, and this is just the way that I like to do it, to be honest. So I think we should go this way because this is what I wanna do. <laughs> so. We're gonna play around with the wheels and once we're happy with everything we created with the wheels, and I think here it's very important to balance shadows, midtones, and highlights. Once we're happy with it, we wanna add a bit more contrast on the other side of the face. And to do so, just create a different mask and bring down the exposure with the curves. Both of these masks can be trackable. If you want to track them, it's really up to you. Now we're gonna move on to colors and colors is where we're gonna adjust the color of our own image. To me, is a little bit too blue and we want to move it a bit more on the teal side so i like to use the color warper to just make things easier because i'm a very visual person you can also use the color versus you saturation curve but i just i just like the color warper more once we got colors we got primaries we got our look all we got to do is add a bit more of a film look and to do so we're going to add halation and film grain now starting from halation Halation in the Vinci Resolve, it's pretty good to be honest, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I personally use Filmbox or Dehancer for Halation. But in this specific video, because I want you guys to have a free version of this, I don't want you to have to spend $500 on a plugin. You can use 
just a simple halation tool. So you bring it, drag it and drop it. And once you dropped it in, it's gonna look a bit weird. You have to adjust the strength, the normalization, the U, the gamma and all of those things. Usually this is kind of what I do. You can play around until it looks a bit more natural. Once it's done, I usually just add a bit of secondary glow, which is a bit more of like a bloom effect. Uh, I always shoot with a promise filter on top of my lens, but this just adds a bit more soft, nice look to the footage. And the last thing they want to add is film grain. Just type in film grain, drag it and drop it. And here it's very depending on the style that you like. I personally prefer something alongside 35 millimeter, 200 or 400, but it's really up to you how much texture you want to add to the footage. And this is the before and this is the after. I think this looks pretty similar to be honest, considering the fact that we didn't like this at all. We just literally went out and shot this in natural light in an abandoned place just for fun. So considering that we didn't use any light, any you know, blocking, anything like that, I think this is pretty good. And now if we take this same grade, we copy and paste it throughout the whole sequence and we adjust a few things, obviously remove the mask or add more mask if you like to. But this basic grade, to me, it looks pretty similar to the Joker grade. And I'm actually very stoked about this one shot that we got with Fede, my friend, smoking in the dark. It didn't really look the same as the Joker, mostly because I didn't have access to a bigger dark scene and we just had very limited time for this shoot. But to be honest, it gives off kind of the same vibe. So I'm very stoked how this turned out. Now let's say that you want to save this grade for the future and reuse it. What I usually would do, I would remove the masks or just disable the mask just so you don't have them. And then go into gallery, make sure you got power grade selected, go back into DaVinci Resolve, right click, grab still, and then rename it Joker look. And that's all done. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did so, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.